normally I would be talking about Electronic Entertainment Expo, that's E3. That's what's going on currently, or would be going on this week if it wasn't for the global pandemic coronavirus. All of our favorite gaming shows and conventions have shut down GDC, GamesCon, and Tokyo Game Show, and this, E3. But instead, gamers love to get together, even if it's online. So we've been able to have a bunch of online events. So the one we're talking about today is the Summer of Gaming, and a whole bunch of cool trailers and new games were unleashed. So let's talk about some of those cool games and 10 things that I thought were really cool. Number one, I'll go through this pretty quickly because there's so much info I gotta go through, is Metal Hellsinger. It's by a company called Funcom. And this is really cool. This is a first person shooter, rhythm shooter game, similar to Pistol Whip. Has cool graphics, a fantastic, very metal soundtrack. Looks like a lot of fun to play. So I'm looking forward to giving this a shot. If you ever play Pistol Whip, you definitely should on VR. So I'm looking forward to that. Next up, as a retro guy, I was totally taken surprised by Alice Kid in Miracle World. DX. This is a Sega game. It's by Junkin Team and Merge, Merge Games, who are doing the production. And it looks super cool. So it looks kind of similar to uh, Wonder Boy and Dragon's Trap, that type of style. It's not the same developers, but uh, we haven't seen Alex Kidd in 30 years. So I think this is fantastic that this game is actually coming out. So Alex Kidd, Wonder Boy, DX, and Miracle World. Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX, so make sure we get it correct. Next up, they showed footage for Yakuza Like a Dragon. This is a Sega game, and if you follow the previous six Yakuza, <laughs> Yakuza games and Yakuza Kiwami 1 and 2, this is a game about the Yakuza, very similar to Shinmu. Except this game, instead of having real-time third-person combat, uh, it is actually a third-person RPG, very similar to Dragon Quest XI, one of the greatest RPGs ever that you need to be playing. So it's turn-based RPG battles, and it's kind of cool because the main character, he uh, thinks he, he's a big fan of Dragon Quest, and as he's running around doing his fighting, he's uh, the, the menacing men appear, and they can be monsters, and they have crazy special attacks, and if you've ever played a Yakuza game, everything's way, 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 way over the top, and even, like, the guys that are with him, like, did you see those monsters? I'm like, uh, no, but I'm glad whatever you saw made you fight really well. So it's very similar, great story, great storyline. Um, I have some buddies that played the Japanese original last year when it came out, and they absolutely loved it. So I'm looking forward to random side quests, random arcade games. These always have like some cool Sega uh, knickknacks and mini games in them. So and turn-based RPG. I, I mean, okay, I, I really like the third-person combat in the previous games, but we'll give it a shot. Next up is a game called Dermot Demon Turf, and these are got by a company called Fabras. And if you've ever played Slime Son, that is who that company is. And this looks really cool. I like the art style of this game. You're a little demon and you third person go through platforming type and solving puzzles and things like that. Um, the aesthetic looks really neat. Um, I'm looking forward to giving this game a shot when it comes out. Next is a game called Observer System Redux. And this is by our friends in Bloober Team. And if you, this is a Redux, a remake of the original Observer game that's on like the Switch and PlayStation and PC and every high definition trick you could think of in the book. It now supports 4K, supports 60 frames a second, HDR, ray tracing, spectrum highlights, anti disestablishmentarianism <laughs> Every special effect you can think of is there and it looks stunning. The particle effects are gorgeous and androscopic filtering looks really good. Everything looks really good. The animation they increased, the texture models, like everything just looks amazing. So if you haven't had a chance to play Observer on the Switch or any other platform, which you should, it is a first person, not necessarily a walking sim, but a very cyberpunk adventure with a mystery that you need to solve. And it's really cool. It's a really slick game. Uh, check that out. Next on display was Borderlands 3 and the DLC of Bounty of the Blood. Uh, this is a Gearbox title. If you haven't played Borderlands 1 or 2 or 3, you really should. The It's a very first person uh, loot shooter and lots of death, lots of hundreds and hundreds of guns and add-ons and things like that. Really cool art style. And this DLC shows uh, some really neat things that are coming down the pipe. So that'll be interesting if you're a Borderlands 3 fan, I would check it out. Chances are you already know what this is anyway if you're a Borderlands 3 fan. Uh, next is GTFO. This is by a small little company called Ten Chambers Collective. This is a multiplayer 
multiplayer shooter where you're trapped in this underground dungeon type thing and there's monsters trying to eat you and you, the four of you have to cooperate to get the fudge out or you die and if anyone tries to go off and do anything rogue and go go Leroy Jenkins on anything everyone dies so it's very much a very much a cooperative game and everyone fulfills their roles and do what they need to do and then they can get out and it's a very slick game it's been in Steam uh, early access for a while definitely give it a shot that's coming too if you're a Dark Souls fan hint hint later on there's this new game called Mortal Shell the company is uh, by uh, the company is Cold Symmetry, and this looks really interesting. This is very Dark Souls, Demon Souls esque, where it's super diff difficult, <laughs> hard as nails. Uh, that gameplay where you die a hundred times and you get a little bit better each time looks very, very, very interesting. Um, the Mortal Shells, obviously, we don't know that much about the game because it's just announced, but I believe there's things inside these shells that are mortals. I just now got the connection. <laughs> so graphics look very beautiful, very scary, very similar to typical Souls games. Should be really awesome. So looking forward to that. Check out the trailer, see what you think. Next to the last game that I saw that I thought was really interesting was called Void Train. It's by a company called Hyper Train Digital. And this, I can't really figure out exactly what it is. It looks very exploration-y, puzzle solving-y, uh, perspective bending. Uh, portals and warping of the world and environment I don't know what this is but I really like the art style I like the premise of what this is it kind of reminds me of something that Jonathan Blow would do um, very the witness or the braid or that type of art style it's very journey or flower um, or sky like I really like what I was seeing here so I don't know I don't know exactly what I'm seeing here but it seems interesting so I'm definitely gonna follow this game as the year proceeds out finally the biggest announcement that made me laugh, laugh, lol, out loud, and scream is Arcade 1UP. I'm kind of addicted to these things. The Arcade 1UP company has produced a bunch of three quarter size arcade cab, so about four feet and change, of various properties. They've done like Pac Man, Galaga, Marvel Super Heroes, Star Wars with the Flight Yoke, um, Atari games. Like they, they have some really cool stuff. They have uh, Sega's uh, Golden Axe 2 coming out later on this year. They have a four-player NBA Jam, four-player Teenage Mutant Turtles, which is fantastic. Because now I know I have so many children, we can all play Turtles. It's a beautiful, it's a wonderful thing. So they announced one of my favorite games, Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh my gosh. So it comes with Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel War of the Gems, which I believe was an SNES game, and uh, Marvel Super Heroes. And they also released an X-Men vs. Street Fighter cab with uh, X-Men, Children of the Atom, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, etc. <laughs> it's like, like, I want to buy both of these, but I can't buy both of these. What do I buy with these? I have previously talked about how one of my favorite games is Miss Pac-Man. And finally, after almost 40 years, almost 40 years, not quite. Pac-Man had 40 years the other day, but almost 40 years. We have an actual arcade cabinet of Miss Pac-Man. Because Namco Bandai just now got the rights from Midway. And it looks gorgeous. So it has Miss Pac-Man in it, Pac-Land, pac Junior, Pac I believe. And it's very authentic to what an actual Miss Pac-Man cab looks like. It looks fabulous, fabulous. If I didn't already have several iterations of Miss Pac-Man, I would totally pick this up. And I may pick it up anyway. Shh, my wife's not watching this, so don't let her know. And finally, the last thing that RK went up show that I don't need this, but I want this so bad. I love pinball. And I've always wanted some sort of pinball table, some pinball representation in my house. Unfortunately, they're super expensive. I'm talking like $6,000 and humongous. So I don't really have any place to put this. But RK went up is releasing these cool digital pinball machines. So a couple months ago, they showed off a Star Wars one. And... For the summer of gaming, they showed off a Marvel one. And it has haptic feedback, it has a solenoid, so games feel like, you know, you're actually hitting, hitting the flippers. There's a little bit of tilt things that you can do to kind of nudge the ball, which is really neat. And there's 10 tables included on the play screen. So, it'll probably be about five or 600 bucks. And it's about five feet tall. And there is a 24 inch display, it's slightly, slightly recessed. And another screen for the dot matrix display for the score, score and things like that. But man, these are fabulous. 
I don't think I can, I don't think, there's no I don't think, there is no room for this in this house, but I'm gonna have to try. I don't know if I'll do Star Wars or Marvel, probably Marvel, that sounds more on my alley, but I gotta get one, I got one. If they release like the White Knight or something, or Black Knight, then there's nothing I can do, I'll have to buy one. So, that's it, that is the quick roundup of the Summer of Gaming 2020. There's a lot more cool things coming out. Nintendo has their show coming out. Microsoft is going to be showing off Xbox Series X games. And other tons and tons of more games from big publishers and small publishers alike. So I'll try and keep you up to date on the cool things that I thought were neat. What did you like during the Summer Game Show? Let me know in the comments down below. So, thank you for watching. Please check out our Red Bubble, our Patreon. Smash that notification icon so you get updates the second we drop new content. And remember, gamers who play together stay together. So love one another, keep gaming, wash your hands, and don't forget to breathe. Thank you very much. Peace. Peace.